So let's let's do let's have another round of applause for our special guest. Let's play listening to uh, a little bit of the mic. Do I need the mic? Yeah. I'll get louder as I go on, you'll see. I have that energy about me. Um, so, it was funny listening to all the reps and the reports, and I'm thinking like, oh no, I'm getting up here. I don't have a, uh, an event to talk about, or a giveaway, or an informational session coming up, and I'm very happy that I am hosting a Rain Barrel event, not too far, so make sure you come out. FreeRainBarrelEvent.com, sign up for your Rain Barrel. So, I'm not even sure where to begin, because it has been a long time coming that, that, this, that this meeting has, has had to take place. Unfortunately, I don't do weekend meetings um, for religious observance, so I'm, I'm happy that I am finally here to talk to you. Again, I want to be clear to talk to you, hear from you, and have that debate with you. I don't expect everybody to walk away and agree with me. I hope that you at least respect the fact that I have never been shy about sharing my opinion, talking about it, debating it, whether it's on Twitter, as, uh, as I have uh, poked some of my opponents very often. I'm not shy, right? There's one, you know, you might not like my views on things, but you can never say that I'm not accessible to discuss them. Um, and I'm very happy to, to share my views. And by the way, and very rarely, but sometimes I'm wrong. And when I am, I'm more than willing to admit it, adjust it, and, and change direction. So with that being said, is, is I'll give you the quick history. I don't want to talk for too long, but I'll give you the quick history. I'll give you my, my thoughts, my feelings, where we have come in the last five years and hopefully where I think we're going to go in the future, and then happy to hear and discuss your concerns. So, I got elected in September of 2011. <laughs> Trust me, I'm going back to September 2011. It's not going to be a long story, I promise. But I got elected in September 2011, and one of the things I ran on was increasing transportation for Southern Queens and Rockwood. Now, it's no secret, I am not in my district right now. I am just north of my district. I represent uh, probably the, the, the from, from sort of, what is it, 101st, 101st South. Okay, and the only reason I question is because pre-redistricting, I had a small piece up here that got cut off. I represent mostly Southern Queens and Rockaway, so that includes Ozone Park, Howard Beach, Broad Channel, Hamilton, Breezy Point, Far Rockaway, okay? And so I represent Southern Queens, and the number one issue when I was campaigning, since I'm a little kid, my dad used to take me to community board meetings when I was a kid, probably why I ended up here today. Uh, the number one issue was always transportation. It was something that they screamed about in, in Rockaway and Howard Beach when I was a kid. It's something that they screamed about now. And so you have to understand, right, you know, the, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result, right? There's only so much you can improve bus service. There's only so much you can improve a train service. There's only so much you can improve the current transportation infrastructure. Now, that doesn't mean we write it off and say the A is what the A is. No, we continue to fight for those things, but we've got to come up with some new ideas. We've got to come up with something a little bit more big thinking, longer vision, not just about me, but about my kids, about their kids, about the future of our community. In my district, they've heard me say this a million times, I'm excited to have a fresh audience, okay? I was born and raised in Southern Queens, and now I'm raising my kids there. There's no greater compliment to a community that you could be raised there, and then you want to stay there. And then your kids are raised there, and then they want to stay there. That is the definition of a successful community. It's sustainable, it's affordable, it's a great, strong community. Our generation after generation, it perpetuates, and it's fantastic. That's what you want. However, given our current transportation nightmare, we are starting to see that that is not the case. That is trending away, right? And what my fear is, is that what's happening in Long Island and Nassau County, where neighborhoods are shrinking because kids can no longer afford it, they, can't, they don't want to deal with the transportation problem, and so there's no longer demand for housing. The price market goes, the market goes down, and ultimately destabilizes the community. And so, I want to keep, my goal as an elected official is to keep Southern <coughs> Queens strong. I believe solving our transportation problem uh, will go a long way in doing just that. So I got elected September, January 2nd, it was the Daily News of 2012, I think it was January 2nd, the Daily News asked me to write a, an editorial about transportation, so I wrote an editorial in the Daily News, uh, this is, again, this is the first week of January of, of 2012, and I talked about the restoration of the Rockwood Beach Rail Line. Ladies and gentlemen, they laughed at me, okay? Everybody laughed at me. My colleagues laughed, people in the community laughed, people over the place laughed. Phil, you're crazy. It's not going to happen. We, they talked about this for 20 years. Never going to happen. And then about six or seven days later, the governor had a state of the state address in 2012. And the governor announced that the biggest convention center in the entire world was going to be built right here at Aqueduct. That was the governor's proposal in 2012. All of a sudden, Phil wasn't so crazy anymore, right? If we're going to build a huge convention center, we've got to solve the transportation problem. 
It was no longer just for Southern Queens, but if we're going to support this big, massive New York State project, we've got to build the transportation infrastructure. And literally within weeks, I was sitting down with the MTA, with the Port Authority, with community leaders, with Resorts World at the time, discussing how are we going to make transportation problems a reality. And the Rock Ruby Trail Line was on the table as another option, as increasing lanes. I mean, there was a lot of options, some crazy, some not. Rock Ruby Trail Line was very real, very, very quickly. And those plans kind of fizzled out. Whatever, you know, when we get into the politics at all, I didn't give up at that point, right? I saw that there was a pathway to victory. Now, even though everybody thought, like, it's too big a project, it's never going to happen, it's going to cost too much. Every excuse you have heard over the last five years, they said it's never going to happen. MTA is not interested. You've all heard it. And so we kept going. We kept pushing forward. We kept pushing forward. Not looking for, for, for to get the train line built overnight, because I want to be clear. I'm not doing this for me. I'm doing this for my kids. I'm doing it for their kids. It's not the future. And I, I hope we get it done quick, but I know this is going to be a slow process. As, as it seems, it's taken us five years to get to where we are today, which I will talk about right now. And so, slowly but surely, we got other elected officials on board. And so, we got Congressman Meeks on board. We got Congressman Jeffries on board. We got Congressman Nadler on board. Uh, you know, slowly but surely, other agencies came on. The MTA put out their 20 year plan that uh, the Rock Ruby Trail Line is a good option for increasing service. The Reinvention Commission, which was appointed by the governor, said utilizing old rights of way is the best way to, uh, to the, most, the best and most efficient way to increase public transportation access. All of a sudden, the state controller said, wait, this could be a really economical idea. We'll save the state some money, we'll save the MTA some money. This could be the most economical uh, idea. And slowly but surely, we started to build a groundswell of support. Donis Rodriguez came out as the chair of the Council, Council Transportation Committee. He said, wait a second, this is utilizing it right away is a great idea. And so I secured $50,000 and worked with Queens College with all this support to do a, a, a feasibility study. Now this is a, a when you talk about studies, $50,000 doesn't go very far. Um, as you have all heard, we have seen studies in this state, and especially in the federal government, we see them a lot around uh, Jamaica Bay and, and Rockaway Beach. But, Studies can go on for 15 years and cost tens of millions of dollars. We got a $50,000 study, <coughs> mostly utilizing people from Queens College, students at Queens College, residents of the community, to help us determine if there is a need, what would the utilization be, potentially how much it could cost, to look at, as, a, a, as a very bird's eye view of is this doable and, and what would the numbers look like. And so on the same day we announced the results of the study, which I'm going to talk about in just a second, we started getting union support on board as well. TWU, some of the trades unions, other unions came on board and said this is not just about, you know, we can build the trains and go short-term jobs. We're going to create long-term jobs in building the rail, in, in utilizing the rail, and running the line, but also what it's going to do to small businesses right here in right here in Queens and all across the city. And so the results were very, very simple. They said that the number of people who touch the line, who would potentially use the line, can go as high as 500,000 people per day. Okay? Now that doesn't mean, let's be clear folks, I want to make sure that I'm not misquoted, that doesn't mean 500,000 people per day would write. That is absolutely not the truth. But that means that's how many people are in touch of it, which means there's a pool of up to 500,000 people who could potentially be using that line. What does that mean? That means we're taking people out of their cars, we're putting them on a train. We're taking people off of the existing lines and giving them various options. We're giving people choices. And so not only does it create a, a new train line, but it, 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 it decongests the roads, it takes the congestion off of our local Queens roads right here on Wright Woodhaven Boulevard. It also provides, and what that study I think is very important showing, it also provides access from Manhattan to JFK Airport. Right? which is a, a corridor that I think the air train tried to solve on some level but, uh, but never really got anywhere. As everybody here is shaking their head, you know it. I watched that thing grow up, getting built, causing traffic for a decade, and ultimately proving that, that it's not going to do the job. And so we have continued to build support. Most of my colleagues, some who disagreed with me, said, and the, the talk point was very simple, the MTA does not want to do it. Now, that really denies the reality of, of that the MTA put it in their 20-year plan, right? They put that in their 20-year plan. The MTA also, the Reinvention Commission also talked about reutilizing the, the, the right of way as a most cost-effective way of, of bringing real transit options to, to Southern Queens and to all of Queens. Um, but more importantly, the MTA said, look, if we can find a way to fund this thing, we'd love to start taking the positive steps forward. And so. I was very happy in this year's, in last year's state budget, we tried to get this done. I got a letter that was signed by a majority of my Queens colleagues who said, let's explore. We're not saying 
let's get the train installed next week. We're saying, let's figure out what is real. How much is it going to cost? How much is it, you know, what will it take? How much infrastructure work needs to be done? Because we're having a useless conversation. Until we know the facts, we're really just fighting about theoretical ideas. Right? These are just ideas. Until we know what the actual facts are, what it's actually going to cost, and we're, we're really not, we're, we're not, we're not having a, a, a real debate. And so last year, a majority of my uh, Queen's colleagues signed on to a letter asking for support. We were unable to get it done. This year, I went at it alone, thinking like, you know, I'm just going to put the, the full force of, uh, of my office behind it. And I'm very proud that we were able to secure enough money to complete a full and comprehensive study. Now, someone says, well, how much is that going to cost? There was no dollar amount put. We said that we want the study to be completed to the standard that will give us these answers that we want. And so the NTA came back to us and said, look, you don't have to put it in the law. They wrote me a letter and said, done, we are going to do a comprehensive study. More importantly, most importantly, I think, is that it's not going to last 20 years. You're not going to come back to me in a study in 10 years. It's got to take one year. So it's got to be completed by the end of March 30, March 31st, but before the next budget of next year, it's got to be completed. And so, I'm proud to announce today for the first time that uh, the first week in June, I'll be sitting down with the chairman of the DMTA to talk about the parameters of the study, to talk about what they're going to be reviewing, what they're going to be looking at, and what they're going to, their hope, you know, what they're, they're going to, the outcomes, not what the outcomes will be, but what they like to see, what the plug-in numbers are going to be. So, what could the potential ridership be? How much infrastructure is it going to taste? What kind of trains can actually go on there? What's the best way to mitigate some of the noise? A lot of questions I think that we have all asked time and time again. Um, we're hope, we, we hope to answer, and, and those are the questions I'm going to talk to the MTA about. No one can say that the MTA is not interested, right? Because, you know, when we talk, you all know about the opponents of the rail line. Some of you may be that, but I want to be very clear. Every time I talk about the train line, every single time, I talk about the positive benefit of putting back transportation to Southern Queens. For all Queens, for all of New York City. That's all I talk about. Always. I don't pretend to know all the facts. I don't pretend to be an engineer. I never tell you, here's where the stops are going to be, or here's the climate trains. I don't know. I'm not a tra transportation engineer. What I can tell you is that the benefits of, of putting a train line back are very, very simple. We're going to take cars off the road. We're going to relieve congestion. We're going to, go, we're going to increase intra-borough connectivity. Right? Think about being able to get on a train and go down to the beach and not have to deal with the problems of the A. Right? Think about getting on a train from Southern Queens and being able to go into Forest Hills and not having to deal with the traffic of Woodhaven Boulevard. Think about being here and being able to get on a train and be in Midtown Manhattan in 33 minutes. Right? Those are, those are real things. It's not because I made it up. Because in 1961, the train ran and that's exactly what it did. Those are the facts. Right? That's what I'm pushing for. Now, there are those people who believe in other projects who will tell you, number one, the MTA is not interested. Right? Well, the MTA is interested. Well, it's going to cost too much, so it's not worth it. Well, they don't have a clue. I love it when people who are experts in other areas, and I don't take that away from them, because there are people out there who are experts in parks. They do not know anything about transportation or how much transportation is going to cost. So they can't say it's going to cost too much. We're talking about alienating parkland? Yes, we are going to have to alienate parkland, right? It's city-owned land currently. Forest Park is the second largest park in the entire borough. And quite frankly, Queens can't keep up maintaining the current park we have. And so I think that we are absolutely justified for the benefit of the entire city of New York to, uh, to open it up, to bring this line back. And so, yeah, we're going to have to take away parts, uh, certain parts of, of Forest Park to do it. And to the, to the age-old question of, well, it runs right through my backyard, I ask anybody who, who says that to me to come with me anytime they want to Hamilton Beach. Because in Hamilton Beach, there's a train line about 30 feet from the front door of a lot of families. And they know the train line was there when they bought the house, the train line is there today. Anybody who bought a house, was that house, the train line was behind their house. When they bought that house, wherever you live, whether it's Forest Hills, whether it's in Woodhaven, the train line has always been there. It was running in 1962. If you bought it pre-1962, then you had the train. If you bought it after, the tracks were there. Many people have encroached on, on, on city land. That doesn't make it right. And quite frankly, the best use of this right away is putting back a transportation option. Some people have asked me, well, what about putting the SPS line, taking the SPS line and putting it up there? I'm going to go back to, I, you know, if it's going to increase transportation options for Southern Queens, absolutely. Okay? I want to see rail. I think that's the most effective, but I want to see it utilized for transportation because the most valuable object to any transportation system across the world is the right of way. When you look at the Second Avenue subway line, what costs billions of dollars? It's not the tracks, right? The steel doesn't cost that much money. It's not cheap. 
but it doesn't cost that much money. What costs is digging the tunnel, creating what we already have. We have a right of way. We don't have to dig a tunnel. We don't have to get dredging machines. We don't have to do any of that. We have the most valuable asset. And I'll tell you something interesting. When we talk about the comparisons, well, the High Line is so successful as a, as a park. Do you know where the High Line came from? There was an option. Should we tear down the tracks or should we put up a park? And the idea of putting a park on that trestle was to preserve the right of way. Now, I'm not saying that there's ever going to be a train line back there, but the advocates recognize the fact that once we tear it down, it's gone forever. Absolutely gone. And so I think we are on a path right now. In five years, we have made tremendous improvements. We've built support. We've gotten community involved. We have talked about all the positive things of the project. And I'm very proud to say that in March, we got the MTA on board and that we're going to be moving forward with the feasibility study. And so, come next March, when that study is done, or April, when, when we get a copy of it, we'll come back here, we'll, have that, we'll, we'll be able to have a real conversation based on facts. Because everything you've heard from fancy consultants about a park who know nothing about transportation are just not based in reality. And that's what I want to do. I want to have a real conversation because I, I want to be clear. People said to me, well, what if the study comes back and says it just can't be done? Such disrepair. Well, at least I know where I stand, and we can move on and use our energy somewhere else. My goal is to get something done, folks. I want to be very clear. It'd be easy for me not to do this project. It'd be easy for me to find a project that lasts six, eight months. I have accomplishments. I can send out a fancy press release, say, look what I accomplished. This project is probably going to, 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 to take many, many, many years. Probably many more re-elections before this is ever, ever completed. And so I'm not creating an accomplishment for myself. It's easy to do that. It's easy to say, I have to get re-elected at this time. I've got to say some good things about myself and this time, so I've got to get something done. This is not about getting reelected. It's not about one neighborhood. It's not about Rockaway. It's all about Rockaway. It's about every community across Queens that deserves transportation for their families. It's about every, uh, it's about every community all across this city that deserves transportation equity. Right? There are people who are in Bayside, and I, I've been traveling, I've, I've been taking the show on the road, and I went to Bayside Hills, who this will arguably not really touch. They would love to have a right of way running to their communities because there is a need for transportation. It is the future of our city. What makes New York City the greatest city is our access to, trip, to public transportation. If you get on Wood Avenue, I don't tell anybody in this room. I came back, I came here straight from, from Midtown Manhattan. And it, it literally, it took a long time. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you a funny story. I was trying to, I, I didn't have a chance to eat today. So we were trying to get to Kew Gardens to grab food and then come back here. Couldn't get there. Right? It was going to take too long to get from here to Kew Gardens and back. I wasn't able to. I would have been late to the meeting. And so think about that. It was 6:30. I couldn't run to a neighborhood which is arguably seven or eight minutes away. It would have taken me about 45 minutes to get there and back. That is sad. That's because there's simply too many cars on the road. And anybody who tells you it's going to get better as we progress into the future is lying to your face. This problem is getting worse. If we don't start making investments now. In five years from now, in 10 years, in 20 years, oh, we have missed the boat. It is over. It is finished. There's no way to fix it. If we want to think about our kids and about our future, we've got to start thinking about it right now. And that's what I'm trying to do. And so, look, I get it. Not everybody agrees. I don't ask everybody to agree. At the end of the day, I'm trying to argue with the best facts that I have. I don't try to impose my will on anybody else. But at the end of the day, we've got to fix our transportation problem. I go to the Ozone Park Civic a lot. The civics uh, that are in my district, I, I try to go to almost every single month. And so. Ozone Park Civic is every single month, or whenever this issue comes up, there's a woman who sits in the front, her name is Blanche. I finally found her name. I've been telling this story for a long time. I finally found her name was Blanche. She sits right in the front, and every time we talk about the Rockaway Trail Line, she gets up and says, I remember when I was a little girl, I used to take that train. It existed. It was real. The right of way exists. We can do this. We can make it happen. And I hate to say it, for all those people who were naysayers in 2012 and said, it's just never going to happen. Those people now are saying, how can we be a part of this process and help, you get along, help, help it move along? And so we continue to move forward. No one thought we'd get this far. We've made it this far. And we're going to continue to push forward until I think we get the transportation infrastructure that we deserve. We deserve. We're spending billions of dollars in Manhattan to build a new subway line two blocks from another subway line. We do not have the transportation that our community deserves. I'm going to fight for it, not just for Southern Queens, but for every community that is going to benefit from the economics, from the, from the environmental reasons, and, and ultimately for the transportation. So 
I hope that was okay. I was too long. With that, I would love to take some questions and hear some comments. So I'm just going to you do that. go around and we'll pick, we'll start. Yes. So, so just, just a quick clarification. Um, Assemblyman Goldfeder is here outside of his district uh, and speaking in the forum of uh, an organization that has not been in favor of the rail line in the past. So we thank him for his willingness to, to speak to this audience. Just to be clear, the WRBA held two forums in previous years, one in 2012 and another, I believe, in 2013, to allow people to present on the Queensway, which is a proposal to have a park along uh, the deactivated railroad tracks, or to reactivate the rail line. And after hearing presentations from both sides and hearing community input, the WRBA decided that it was not going to be in favor of either of those projects. Recently, it has asked the DOT and MTA to look into the possibility of running buses along those tracks in lieu of SBS. Has not said that it should be done. It has only said that this is an option that should be examined in lieu of SBS. So I just wanted everyone to be clear about what the organization's position has been and how we reached it. It was with the input of all of you and from listening to both sides. So thank you, Assemblyman Cole. No, thank you. If I can, you reminded me of one thing I missed. I'm, I'm happy to, to announce that I had announced previously is that uh, the city of New York recognizes, and, and we could talk SBS at a different meeting. Um, we could talk if there's later time later, but the city recognizes there's a transportation problem here in Southern Queens, right? The fact that they're trying to push SBS down our throats is, 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 recognition, is, is their recognition that we have a transportation problem. So to that end, the City of New York, the Department of Transportation, wholeheartedly supported the MTA study of the old Rockwood Beach Rail Line, which was another indication that transportation is a problem. And if we can't keep putting patchwork and band-aids, we've got to find a, a real solution. And so uh, Polly, Commissioner Trottenberg uh, wrote a letter to the MTA asking them for a similar study, and I'm, I'm happy that the MTA responded in kind, saying they're going to do the study. Yes. Okay. I apologize for talking to your past, by the way. No, 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 that's fine. Uh, to a hammer, everything is a nail. Okay? So, if you get a bunch of transit people doing a study, a feasibility study on transit, as you would a pharma company and a uh, tobacco company doing studies on drug and tobacco, you're going to have an idea of where the outcome of that is going to be. So, I don't put a whole bunch of value in whether or not a transit group of people doing a transit study is going to find out what the correct answer is. We see now there's a 16 mile, 2.1 billion, which apparently they're able to come up with a number for that, uh, train or uh, monorail, electric monorail trolley along the Brooklyn, Queens uh, waterfront. Doesn't make a whole bunch of sense if you're starting to see, to see that. We're seeing now with SBS that something they thought was great and, and actually is going to help a lot of people, maybe isn't going to do that, right? You made a statement that people will now get out of cars and get on these trains. We've looked at the census data that the DOT and the MTA have looked at, and we have seen that a lot of people would not get out of trains because where they commute from, from Queens to work, is not where these train lines are going to go. We also have situations where for 50 years, when people bought houses in Rockaway over the last 50 years, they knew they were going to a place that was underserved by transportation, as did people uh, like Neil who bought when they knew there was not going to be a train there. And you could say legally, you know, it is the right way. My question is, how are we going to know the right thing that is going to happen and it's not going to be just to service a bunch of people who already have something previous. So uh, let me start backwards. So it starts to your last question is that people you know keep telling me, well this is you know it's, this is more of an issue than just Rockaway. Two years ago, summer visitation to Rockaway was about four million people came to visit Rockaway in the summer. Last year it was about seven million people, and this summer it's projected to be about ten million people are going to come to Rockaway. Now, a portion of that is getting on the subway. The rest of them are driving right to your neighborhood, right? They're coming from other neighborhoods and coming from everywhere. That's the fact. 
right? That is just the fact, right? If, if we're not offering a, a, a real alternative for those, not just to visit, I'm talking, hold on. It's not to rush out. Hold on, hold on one second. You don't know what it is. But oh, that's, it's not to rush out. People aren't going to the beach. Hold on. So, 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 that is, so, so that's number one. Number two is, you're absolutely right, right? There's no question that people bought their homes knowing what was there and what wasn't there. And so my goal is to make community stronger. I got elected, I ran on this idea that I'm gonna try and make community stronger, right? How do I do that? By increasing transportation options. Now, I don't believe, now again, I, I you know, without getting into SPS, I don't believe that people are gonna get out of their cars to get on a bus. I just don't, because I think People have, have reservations about, about bus service. I think at the end of the day, I don't know if it's actually gonna do what DOT says. I think a lot of people are skeptical. I haven't come out and opposed it. Let me be clear, I have not opposed it. I don't think it's going to work. I don't. I just don't think it's gonna work. However, a reliable train service is very, very different. You can't use the same statistics to tell me, well, they're not gonna get out of their cars for a bus. I think they will get out of their cars for a train. I'll, I'll give you a perfect example of that. When I have to go downtown, when I, when I go to Midtown, I have no choice, but I have to drive. If I have to go downtown, I usually park my car somewhere near Liberty and I get on the train, right? Because it is reliable. From that point to get downtown, it's actually a pretty reliable ride. And so I utilize that option when I can. If I'm going to Midtown, you all know I'm staying in my car, I'm taking Woodhaven all the way down, as most people do in the morning going north and in the afternoon coming south. The, what, what the train will do is provide a lot of options, right? It will take all the current east-west lines, and I wish we should have brought our map, and I apologize, but I'll email it, so if you want to email it out. There's a lot of east-west lines that cut across Queens. There is nothing that cuts north-south. And what this will do will provide intersections at every one of those east-west corridors to provide options. So the A train right now, I used to, when I worked in, in Midtown Manhattan, so I used to take the A train. It was an hour and 15 minutes door to door on the A train. And so I would get on at, at, at Mott Avenue and Far Rockaway. By the time we left the Rockaway Peninsula, Beach 67th Street was the last stop. We'd get to Broad Channel and then into Howard Beach. It was already not only standing room, but it was like shoulder to shoulder standing room. By the time we got to Liberty, we were, we were leaving people behind. There was no way that people were getting on that train. If you provide an alternative, Right? So someone says, instead of staying on this train, I'm going to stay up, I'm going to connect to, to, to the E, I'm going to connect on the Montauk line. Again, I'm not proposing these, I'm not the engineer, and I'm not the guy who's going to say where the stops are going to be. You're providing alternate options that will alleviate the current mess of the A train, to alleviate current messes on the express bus service, and hopefully take cars off the road. I'm not a transportation engineer, and, and so I, I don't pretend to know how it's all going to turn out, but I think we pride real affordable options is going to work and then to speak to this idea that you're right right when you have consultants that are paying you know you are being paid with tax dollars hundreds of thousands of dollars to do a study about a park they're going to come out and say well park is the best option the mta is an agency that is tasked with transportation we trust them to run our transportation system maybe some in this room don't trust them i would be a fan tom Prendergast. actually i found to be much better than a previous chair people, whether you like it or don't, I found them to be at least uh, responsive uh, when it comes to transportation. The MTA is, is the agency that is tasked with, with transporting people in the city, in the state, I should say. And so if we're going to try and create a new MTA line, they're the only agency that I think would be fair or, or only agency that is tasked with doing that in, uh, in a way that I think we all need to see. They have to run, they have to connect it to the other lines, they have to, a lot more variables that have to, to be looked at. And so. I don't see another option. Well, we have to get to the if, and maybe after we get to the if, right. but we should have someone other than transportation people getting to the if. That's all I'm saying. So just to, 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 to end that, is that I commend, again, the MTA called me and said, hey, we want to discuss what you're looking for in a study and what we want to see in a study, and so that's exactly what we want. We want to know sort of what the right questions to be asked so we get the right answers. Not the right answers, but at least the answers we know how to take to the next step. Thank you. Uh, let me just first say, I'm speaking now as a citizen taxpayer, all right? My boss doesn't Change have a dog. Yeah. <laughs> My boss doesn't have a dog in this fight yet. All right, I do. All right, let me tell a little story, Phil. Yes. January of 2001, we came to look at a house on 98th Street, and much to my surprise, I look at, I can't believe this is Woodhaven. This isn't Woodhaven, this looks like Long Island. 
this is a beautiful house. It's got trees and everything. I walk in, and they said, look at the deck in the back. And I walk in the deck, and they said, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. Yard. What the is that? <laughs> Well, that's the old Long Island Railroad Rockaway line. I called my lawyer and I said, find out who owns that. And it's not empty yet. The case. I said, how come my neighbor's garage is up here and mine is way back there? Said, oh, it was the old right away along the track, you know. Oh, my goodness. I, no, no, Nabel, don't worry, says the lawyer. You didn't, you didn't encroach. They bought the land from the city. I've heard that twice. All right, that the, the implication that somehow the people on 98th Street have taken that land. This isn't Forest Hills. All right, it isn't Alderton. We bought them right away. I'll take you to a guy on 98th Street. Not only does he have the behind his house, he has behind his neighbor's house. All right, that's number one. We own that land. We knew what we were buying, and what we were buying was not the MTA. All right. I come to these meetings every month, and I hear the same damn thing. You know, I, I kid around. I say I could schedule the le the next the uh, the last come here, right? the return of the Messiah to win it. And this group would say, "Whoa, where's Jesus going to park?" <laughs> Can't you put it over in Glendale, you know, you know, we don't even get it done. There are too many cars in Queens. There are too many cars in Queens, and there's too many cars in Queens because public transportation sucks. All right? We need to do something about Woodhaven Boulevard. We need to do something. You're absolutely right. I agree with you. Not for us, for our children. I can see the difference in my own kids. They don't drive cars. You're not going to, you know, the fact that you can have perfect, you can have perfect. I'm not getting on a bus. I'm not getting on a train. All right? Here's what I'd like you to do. All right? Because I'd be honest with you. I wouldn't trust the MTA to find their own backsides using two hands and a flashlight. All right? Let's try this. Instead of, instead of trying to reinvent the wheel all at once, how about we reopen service on the Atlantic Avenue? Give me a couple of stops. I could walk to Atlantic Avenue, pick up a Long Island Railroad, and go to Brooklyn. see the Nets. Yeah, I thought you could do Brooklyn. Wouldn't that be great? How about we reopen Richmond Hill Station? How about we reopen the stations that are there, the rails that are in place, the rails that are being used? You know, I'm, listen, you want to check out the Rockway? Fine. But also, let's look into the feasibility of opening up the right-of-ways that exist and are serviceable right now. It's not expensive enough. So let me... I mean, I, that's the problem. You know, you know, yeah, it is much larger, much incremental changes. We move forward little by little as the service improves. More and more people will say, geez, maybe I don't need a car. And we'll get on the bus, we'll get on the train, we we'll increase the ridership, and then you make the next change. Instead of putting the bus in the middle of Woodhaven Boulevard, run it along the curb. Better bus service will bring more people. And then, and then little so, by little, we move towards it. So let me just say, first, let me just thank Neil. Because Neil and I weren't always as good of friends as we are today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's not true. <laughs> now look, I, not I, true. I, I want to say is, is that Neil is, is not wrong in anything that he said. Uh, number one, let me start by, we start where you started. and I. I I appreciate the question, I appreciate what you said. In my office, and I shouldn't say this too loud, I have about a one foot piece of railroad track that came off of the Rockaway Beach rail line, okay? Doesn't mean that I rightfully own it, it means that I stole it, okay? I have a one foot piece of track, reporters please, don't get me in trouble. And it was because, it was a gift from my staff because we worked so hard and they thought I deserved to have a piece of it, even if we're not gonna get there. And so, by the way, if the cost is an extra hundred bucks, that's on me, I'll pay for it. Okay? <laughs> I, you know, I can't tell you who owns what. I think that ultimately surveys are going to have to be done, and, and that's going to happen. You know, people have said to me, "Well, there's a bus company in the Little League," and 
in those leases, there are covenants that allow for the city to, to reclaim those lands. I want to be clear. There are a lot of Little League fields. If we want to build a new Little League field to, 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 to replace the one that we would have to take, we could do that. That's not something that is hard to do. We could build a, we have a lot of acreage in Forest Park that is currently a mess that we could build beautiful baseball fields. So in the land that is currently being occupied by, again, there's three spots, bus company, the Little League, and, and something else. There are covenants in those leases that, that would be taken if the city has the right to take it back. I assume that on some level we'd have to do surveys to, to determine ownership, and that is fair, and, and mm -hmm. I would respect that and, and abide by it. Like, you know, look, people have rights too, and I, I would do the same thing like you if it was in my backyard. You're absolutely right. You know, I don't think for one second that the MTA is going to say we could, and let's just, best case scenario for a moment, right? MTA says, oh, it's doable, the stands, everything is in great condition, it only costs $940 million, a couple budget seasons, we'll have it done in five years, you have a full train running in every which way you want it. Not realistic, right? I've been working with my colleagues, some of them who agree and, and some don't agree, and some of them who think just, just like you, like, hey, why can't we look at this in pieces? And ultimately, I think that's what will happen. Um, I, you know, oftentimes we, <coughs> I'll give you a perfect example. This week is very current, so you'll appreciate it, right? There's the debate in Albany this week, and I spent half of my week in Albany this week. The debate in Albany is about mayoral control of public schools. Yeah. I don't want to get into it, but here's what I would tell you. So I believe, I believe, I believe, okay? I'm not, I don't want to get into it, so don't hammer or, or, or yell or, or scream. I believe mayoral control should be permanent, right? There needs to be accountability. And so if it's mayoral control, then I know who to go after if my school stinks, right? I remember when I was a kid, Board of Elections, the Board of Elections, the Board of Education Systems. Again, I don't want to get into that policy debate. So, I think a lot of my colleagues in the Assembly ab agree with that. And yet, we passed a three-year bill, right? So the Assembly passed a bill this week that would extend mayoral control for three years. I think we've weakened our own negotiating position, right? We're saying three years, we're essentially giving up in the beginning, right? You need to argue for the most and then find a compromise. Because we said three years, and the Senate is still saying zero years. And so now they've got us, right? So a compromise now is a year and a half, right? As opposed to we're saying permanent, you're saying none, let's compromise on 20 years, right? We compromised our negotiating position by settling before the other, the other side was even at the table. And so I would say the same thing on the rail line. I'm gonna fight for as much as I can fight for. I will accept and take what I, what I can take that will improve transportation for Queens. So, Mike Miller and my colleague who I talk to on a daily basis, he yells at me sometimes, and that's okay. Um, we're very, we're very close. He has, he has an idea. Number one, he jumped on board with the bus idea, which I don't think is a bad idea either, because it preserves, remember, because it preserves the right of way. And so, if in a hundred years from now, if the right of way is still there, we can re, we can readdress it, but it still preserves the right of way. He talked about maybe only connecting to Atlantic. You know, if we're going to do the rail line, maybe only connecting to the Atlantic line and providing a much quicker commute to, to downtown Brooklyn and offer options in that way. And so. There are a lot of ideas. I just want to keep the conversation going. People never thought, as far as the rail line is concerned, that we would get to the MTA getting on board. Right? People thought when we started this, it would be 100 years before the MTA even agrees to look at it. And five years later, we've gotten them now looking at it and doing the study. And so let's come back in a year from now and have that conversation again based on what they find. Because that's a conversation based on facts that you and I and everybody in the community, and every community, by the way, I don't stop here. I'll go as, Anybody who asked me to speak, I spoke at Community Board 6, who opposes it. I spoke at, at, at Community Board 9, who opposes it. But I spoke at Community Board 5, who was for it, right? And so I'm happy to talk to take this conversation and talk to anybody to make sure we're building the right consensus. But look, we're going to do something. This idea that we can do nothing and like life will go on, it won't. Our communities are going to suffer if we don't start thinking right now. So thank you. I'll come to Joe. I just wanted to say before I leave, um, Whenever we have this conversation, everybody talks about how we're gonna get the people to the city faster. Not everybody works in the city. A lot of people that come down that Woodhaven car are like my wife. They go to Queens Boulevard, they make the left turn, and they pass Broadway, and they work around 76th Street, they work at Elmhurst Hospital. So those are the people that are gonna suffer. The people that are driving locally that, that it usually takes them 10 or 15 minutes to get there, but once that bus service starts, it's gonna take them longer. It's gonna take them 45 minutes to, because, let me finish. I agree, I'm not talking about the bus service. service. I wanna clarify, right. I agree right. with you. I'm not disagreeing. I don't think the bus service is gonna work. I think it's gonna be a nightmare. I think the train service will do the opposite. I think it'll take cars off the road and allow for quicker train. I, 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 
stop it. Stop. The stop. Traffic traffic traffic. is not going to take cars off the road because the people that are on that road you can't say that. are not going to stop do. driving to Queens. You're talking about getting people to the F train to, so they can get to Manhattan. These people drive. They're not going to stop driving because of the train service. They're going to continue driving because they drive to Queens. They drive to Long Island City. They they I'm work locally. I'm going to say two things. So number one is NYU did a study. Bruton Center did a study, and, and which which was a long study by a respected institution that said uh, an investment in transportation, uh, an investment in transportation is worth almost three times an investment in what we call economic development. Right. So you invest in transportation, and you're going to increase transportation more than to take that same million dollars, for example, and invest it in you know trying to help local stores with grants or any other economic development program. Number one. Number two is. Most people work in areas where they can get to. And so the statistics are most people in Rockwood work on or near the A train. I forget what the statistics were. It's like I think almost 60% of the people work on somewhere on the route, whether it's in downtown Brooklyn or on the route of the A train or in downtown Manhattan. Because people tend to move to communities where they have quicker access to their, to their job or find jobs that they can get to. And so that is a fact. So, yes. There's no question. As you change things, things evolve, and for some it'll get better, for some it may even get a little worse. You have to look at the greater good, and I, I, again, I'm not asking any one person to suffer. I think we all suffer with living in New York City. It's funny, and I've said this a lot of times. I live, I bought my house, I, I want to be clear, I knew it was there when I bought my house, but I live in the shadows of JFK Airport. And so in the summer, when I'm out with my family in my backyard, the planes are going by every five minutes. There's a huge plane going by, and I have never one time said, let's turn JFK Airport into a park. Never, okay? I have never said that. You know why? Because I believe I love the neighborhood I live in. I love the neighborhood where I grew up. And I think it's the cost of, you know, sort of living in that community. We all deal with certain problems, issues, and so can we try to address it? Yes, you've seen me fight. You know, we can fix airplane noise. We can make adjustments. We can try and do things differently. And so, yeah, there's no perfect system. I don't pretend there is, and I'm going to keep fighting for what I believe is to try and make those improvements. If there are things that can be changed, if there are things that can be adjusted, if there are situations where, you know, there may be a, a select group of people, or there may be people who are gonna are gonna suffer. I think at the end of the day, we want to improve transportation uh, access and options, and I, hopefully, ultimately, that would be that that's in the best interest of, of the, everybody in Queens and, and across the city. Oh, but thank you. I just would like to know. Uh, I'm assuming that you live down in the Rockaways. Right? Yes. Okay. Now, how is this going to Help people in the Rockaway. This only goes to Avenue. No, the current goes it goes all the way down to Rockaway. In nineteen sixty one you can get from Rockaway oh, to Midtown well, Manhattan in forty two minutes. Forty two minutes. From from Rockaway to Midtown Manhattan. Yep. I should I, I apologize. What I'll do is I'll email the map just again as a proposal, not trying to but so you can email it around so people can see what it looks like. So this goes way down. I'm wondering why you're advocating for this because I'm thinking to myself, people where you live is not going to not going Yeah, to it will. And, and by the way, okay. I, I want to say also, there's talk now about development at Aqueduct Racetrack. And so you can't, the more development we build, the more the transportation is going to suffer. And we can't, we can't in good conscience continue to build and develop and develop and develop, which is a good thing, right? I think most of us agree, responsible development. We can't do that if we're not addressing the transportation because you, you can't fit another car on the Van Wyck, you can't fit another car on Woodhaven Boulevard, you can't fit another car on Cross Bay, you can't fit another car on, on the Belt Parkway. It's just there's no more room. We fit our capacity for, for traffic. And so, and by the way, that's not just traffic, the subways as well. Like I said, by the time we got to Howard Beach, we're jam packed. That's it. We've hit our capacity. So, what's going to happen in five years when the casino is bigger and they maybe have built a hotel by then, like they're talking about? Or, how are those people going to get here, right? All these new people are going to come. How are they going to get here? We've got to look at those options today. I'd just like to know if there's a, if there would be a private railroad company that would be interested in developing that line. I don't think, I mean, we, we went out, I think the city used to have private bus lines. I think that was the last of the private private lines. I don't, I don't think that's even an option nowadays. Really? Um, I mean, look, it's a city-owned land. I wouldn't be a, if you're talking transportation, I wouldn't, I wouldn't throw it away and say I'm opposed, but I don't know if it's realistic. Uh, you know. uh, I want to do a feasibility study. I think, you know, I got a better idea. It's far I think it's there. already in existence. That will give you the answer to what you said. Because it have the same problems. What are we going to do with these cars? Where are you going to, who's waiting in the park? It's going to close stops at, the, at each stop and everything else. You have that 
the monorail. My question to you is, when all these questions came up, the same problems and the same that you're bringing up that this one is trying to solve, is, was, was, and they decided it was going to be either this train track or the van wick, and they turned it over to the van wick. Question is, how much money are they making on the monorail? Because I got a very strong feeling. You'll put a train in the backyard over here, and all of a sudden you'll find out they're still using their cars, and you know what? It ain't paying for itself. And you're aggravating the hell out of everybody from here to Manhattan. Just, I what, not, what's I, the number of how much they make in the monorail? Was it, I, you can't compare. Whenever I go in that direction, you can't compare. And I stop, and I look up, and I see the monorail go by. It's three quarters empty. You can't compare. It's not a comparable Well, it was supposed to be because that it was going to cause the traffic to alleviate the traffic. The van with the I never said it. As a matter it was fact, 100 years ago. Every community board at the time was was opposed to it. Elected officials were opposed to it. It was, I believe, it was it was a big mistake to do. I think a lot of people. But if you're not making money there, you're not going to make money here. Oh, that is, I don't believe because that. Because three that's quarters, not true. three quarters, I've been into the Rockways. Three quarters of the properties in the, in the Rockways are lots. It's not true. So what you're saying is not true. There's your lot scene coming from. It's, it's not true. You can't say. They're all burnt out lots. Can we let them answer? It's not what you're saying is not true, right? You can't say because the monorail is not working, right? And by the way, I wasn't, I mean, I was a kid when they were building it. Even though, by the way, even at the time, they said, oh, you're never going to do it. And they did it right along the Van Wick for how many years? How many years? You can't say because ridership is not good on that, again, on that system that like a new train line that runs through central Queens is not going to work. You are talking literally apples to oranges. It's, it's not the same. Same no, problem. It's not, it's not, it's not the same solution. You're right. Same problem, very different solution. I wouldn't have proposed that plan back then. If I were around, I would have proposed the Rockaway Trail line back then. And I'm sorry I wasn't there. And I'm sorry that people weren't more vocal and active and excited about it. Because we did ourselves a huge disservice by spending millions and millions of dollars on a solution that didn't solve the problem. That does not have any bearing on the Rockaby Trail line or what it will eventually do. The same thing, they're not going to make enough money in saving these people so they can use a train instead of a car. They're not going to make the money. I, the argue, again, like I said, the argument doesn't, doesn't, doesn't hold water because it's not the same project. It doesn't touch the same areas. It's, not, it's just not the same. As a matter of fact, you can't get on that. that it, and I, by the way, I used to, when I used to commute from Midtown Manhattan, and I couldn't catch a, uh, an E, what I would do is I'd take the E the other way, go into Jamaica, get on the air train, take that to Howard Beach, then jump on the A and go home back to Rockaway, right? I think it cost me almost $12. You pay $5 to get on, I think $7 to get off the air train, right? It's not a subway fare. It's not a, it's not a viable option to help anybody. Does it get you into the airport? Yeah, it's not an easy It's not an easy ride. It was very rare, by the way, when I took the A train, and you saw people on the A train with suitcases. Now, I'm not saying the ridership is zero. There are people who utilize it, but that is not in any way, shape, or form a comparison to what we're trying to do with the rail line. Not at all. We'll take two more questions, and we just go to Steve, and then see. Yeah, just a couple of quick things. I mean, as far as whether or not there are conferences and, you know, in land ownership like that, like, uh, related to what you know, we're saying, it doesn't really matter whether there are or not. Because the same thing will happen if they want to do the project. It's like they did when they built City Field. They'll just invoke eminent domain and take what they want. So, you know, Neil, you may lose your backyard anyway. Yeah, that's Go right. But, you know, you can come to the barbecue at my house. The implication, no, it, it's always, I was always concerned because we did this years ago with the, with the, uh, the park people, the bicycle people. You know, they, was, well, they looked at it and said, well, you know, he took this land. No, he didn't. You know, I mean, it was, it was, yeah, we had, you know, I mean, it was, by the cities are piled, and the properties are property. Right, you know, it was, it was always, you know, when something like the NPA, which is like so big, and has so little oversight by the state legislature, which is another problem we've had, I've had this conversation with Joe Dowell many times, since they're an authority, they had no transparency at all. But, bottom line, when you really look at this whole situation, I mean, I'd like to the transportation center. But having a rail line, it's not going to be for the average person to use from Rockway. Because <coughs> they're like lower middle income markets, they can't afford the, the fares that would be on a rail line. Hold on. Hold on. Not I, I have not right? said it would be a rail fare. I envision, I mean, my, my goal would make it a yeah. subway fare. Yeah. But I'm not, again, like I said, until we have the facts and the study and determine what, what it. Sure. But I'm not, you're, you're right. Uh, if it was a $10 a ride, I'm not sure how many people would be able to afford that. And right. Myself included, by the way. And so. I recognize that, and so that that determination would have to wait until we see what the tracks look like and how it will be to, 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 right. to... But the biggest issue I, I think that really has to be considered is the fact of the, 
the lack of competency of the MTA to maintain the current system. Yeah, you know, we need better transportation, but they can't keep the current system running properly and efficiently. So what makes us think that by allowing them to put more in, I mean, every time in the winter time, temperature drops a little, all our railroad trains are down. You know, you know, I'm just on another train at a certain. So that was actually, you bring up a very, what's your first name? Steve. Steve. Steve, you bring up actually a really, really good point. Because the argument was made to me, like, look, there's a $12 billion gap in the MTA's current capital, right? So if the current MTA has $12 billion where they can maintain the system they already have in place, how can we possibly justify more? And so I'm sure you've heard from, from members uh, who represent you is that in this year's budget, we filled that gap, right? We found a way, it was a deal, started pre the budget with the governor and the mayor and the MTA, worked at a deal, you could write about it in papers, and then in the budget, we sort of solidified it and, and sort of did our, our uh, you know, sort of filled that gap. That gap is done now. Again, you're talking about years of work, right? There's a five year capital plan, so I'm not looking for tomorrow. I recognize there are problems. And by the way, and without definitely not getting into this, but if you talk about the Move New York plan, for example, and I don't want to get into it. But my, one of my biggest concerns is that we're going to put money into this new, we're going to pay tolls on, on new bridges to fund the MTA. It's like, well, I don't know if I like that idea, right? If, we, if I knew that that money was going to get reinvested here in Queens and money was going to say, then that's, that's an argument to make. Or I went to an agency that like, we knew was going to spend it responsibly, it was going to go, that's a different point. So I'm not looking to create new revenue streams for the MTA to use to fill a bunch of gaps on projects in other, in other neighborhoods. And so I agree with you. I understand your concern. I'm not looking to, to get this done tomorrow. I think you're right. We need to make real reforms to, to get the MTA in, in check. I sit on the Corporations Committee, and, and so we have some oversight over the MTA. And we're working. It's a slow process. I will say this. Better than any chairperson before him, Tom Prenega has come to the table every single time. Whereas chair people before him would say, I'm not coming, or Jay Walder and, and some others, like, you know, Tom Prendergast is kind of a doer, right? He's a guy who understands the system, and, and, you know, and, and sort of has, has been at, at sort of every hearing and meeting we've had, and has never not taken my call. And so I'm a little bit more confident in his ability to continue moving us forward. It's baby steps, but I'm not planning for tomorrow. I wish I was, but I'm not. I'm planning for five, six, seven, ten, twenty years down the line when we can make sure we're doing this the right way and getting it done the right way. I know. Wait, over there, you didn't trust me to ask the question. Do you have another picture or something? I, I was in your way the whole time. So, so. Uh, I know that you said that you're not uh, an engineer or an expert in the mechanics of all this, but I just wanted to note a couple of things from a very Woodhaven perspective that I would be concerned if it's not mentioned in the feasibility study. So, so please keep these in mind. The first is it would be really problematic if you propose a rail line that doesn't have a stop in Woodhaven. If we're treated as nothing except flyover country, that would be very concerning. The second thing is that a lot of residents have had construction done uh, adjacent to the right of way and it's affected their homes in Woodhaven. So for example, the Rosa Park School on I think 101st Street, just off Park Lane South, there was construction done and the vibrations from that construction affected the foundations and the structural integrity of their homes on 98th Street. So I would also be very concerned if there's no consideration of how the homes on 98th Street would physically be affected by what seems to be likely an enormous amount of construction. So I'd really hope that the feasibility study consider those two aspects and also consider how property values are likely to be affected and whether maybe, just, just maybe, if people's homes are going to plummet in value, perhaps there should be some sort of compensation to offset that. At least look at those. I'm not saying commit to that. I'm not no, no, saying no. anything except look at I'll, them. I'll do, I'll, I'll, do, I'll do you one better look. I, I, I don't ever look to push my proposals to the, because I represent my community. I don't care about anybody else because I have my own district to represent. If I believe that, you wouldn't have seen me here tonight. I wouldn't come because I wouldn't care. I do. I recognize that there are people who are going to have to burden some transition and some pain, and I get that. So someone even taking a step further said, well, the noise of the train running in my backyard. So I look at something like that, and I said, look, I am, again, I'm not an engineer, but I have read studies. So I've become kind of an expert in this thing, you know, but I've read studies where if you, if you trench it out, not dig a tunnel, but you trench, and you go down three feet or four feet, and the tracks are actually below grade, that reduces a number of traffic, right? I've, I've seen ideas where you're putting some sort of cover on it, some sort of plastic cover on it, and that reduces noise and, and vibration. And so I'm not proposing any one of those because I don't know what, but I, I believe that every neighborhood deserves a seat at the table. I believe every concern is real, and so I respect every community here in Woodhaven, and yes, you're right. I'm not saying I guarantee a stop's gonna be here because you know I'd be lying, but yeah, I agree with you. 
I absolutely agree. As a matter of fact, the folks in Howard Beach who have to walk to Howard Beach to get on the subway, like they should get a subway stop. If they got to suffer the burden of the train running through their front lawn, they should get a subway stop, right? So again, I'm, I'm saying is that we need to be respectful of everybody. I, I take those those suggestions into consideration. And I, I by the way, I don't. This is not the last time you're going to see me when we're talking about this. I, I want you to be involved as the MTA continues and we're going to talk process, right? I told the MTA part of their study process has to be coming out and being and seeing what the community ideas are, consensus, and hearing things just like that so it can be incorporated into a... So the study is not just that here's what we think should be done. It's a here were the concerns, right? And so it's on paper and we can all, it can be documented and, and ultimately can get a product that while, look, as a politician, I learned a long time ago, you can't make everybody happy all the time, but it does the best to service the most people all across Queens and the city. Thanks. Thank you. I guess that was the last question. I wanted to give them a round of applause. Thank you.